Well, brethren, we remember today a price that was paid at a heavy cost with the very life of Jesus. This was a sacrifice which involved a laying down. This was a price that involved the complete surrender of will and purpose. As we come to this table today, we remember that the freedom which we experience from sin and shame has come as a result of this very real transfer that took place. We remember not only a work which was accomplished for us, but the person through which it was accomplished. And we remember that salvation involved the giving of Jesus' person. And 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, it says, and the verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. So this, this wasn't in any way an impersonal work. This is not something that could be done by proxy. This was very personal, intimate work. It required that all be given. When we think about sin, we have to think about sin in this light. Not only what it costs, but the manner of the paying of that cost. Uh, the language in this text has always been very arresting to me when, when I consider that, that he was made to be sin. So the scripture testifies of the death of the Christ in this manner on other occasions as well, where he says in the third chapter of Galatians in the 13th verse that Christ was made a curse for us. In 1 Peter 2.24, it says that he in his own self bear our sins in his own body. It's, it's often been a consideration of mine when I think about this, the weight of that experience. I mean, the very fact that it can be said that he bore anything in his body testifies of, of the humility that, that is required here. Even the fact that the word was made flesh is a tremendous sacrifice of humility. And as we consider the cross, it is beyond the comprehension of a man, really, to, 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 to fathom the depths of this type of an agony. That the one who, the one, we're talking about the one who knew no sin, who never had the experience of guilt, never had the experience of shame, the feeling of what, what it feels like to be alienated from God. For that type of a, a, a being to have the weight of all of the collective human transgression throughout all ages laid upon his soul at once. That is something that is beyond, beyond our full comprehension to understand. So it, it's, it's in this mind as we come to the table today to remember with a sur that, that, that we surrender our will. We do this intentionally um, with the purpose of um, submitting our heart, mind, and soul and strength to him. If he gave all, if he submitted himself to this type of a price, then how can we do anything else but submit all of ourselves to him? And that, that uh, brings me to the other side of this consideration of Jesus being made to be sin and dying to pay for that sin. And that is that this burden was laid upon Christ that we might have a blessing laid upon us. Yes, amen. Um, just as the death of Christ as a substitute on humanity's behalf was a very real death, life in Christ is not a, a mere metaphor. To, to, to speak of things this way doesn't do this sacrifice uh, justice. There was a transfer of sin unto judgment in Christ's death so that there might be a transfer of life and blessing and glory to us. When you're buried into the death of, of Jesus, just as this judgment truly happened, as the wrath truly was expressed, you really are made to be the righteousness of God in Him. You, you know, God is not pretending in Jesus. He really is not. And we notice this in both of these texts that I referenced earlier. He says that he was made a curse for us, but it also says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law and being made a curse for us. It says who in, in, in that text in 1 Peter, who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. That's not, that's not that we ought to, but this is, this is the, what's going to happen. And for us by man, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, something, something actually happened. Something really happened. Many were made to be righteous. 
So uh, just as and just as the consideration of this sin being laid upon Jesus is 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 weighty, it's it's beyond our full comprehension. I would say the uh, the consideration of the fact that men can be rep- become repositories of divine life and glory in Jesus. It's on that same level. That's something that really cannot be fully expressed. How wonderful that really is. There, you know, there, there's no, when we, whenever we talk about this, whenever we come to this table to remember this, we are not at any time in fear of overexhausting this. You know, you can't, you can't really over-exaggerate the blessing here. You can't, you can't uh, uh, exaggerate this. So this morning, as, as we come here to partake of the bread and the cup, uh, let us do so in thanksgiving. Let us do so in gratitude, with 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 purpose and intention. You know, I was I was reminded uh, when I was thinking about this this last week, uh, what it said of people who didn't consider Christ's sacrifice correctly. It said that they made the blood of the covenant an unholy thing. Well, when we come here. To remember Christ at this time, we're, we're actually purposely intending we're, we want to keep the blood of this covenant a holy thing. We don't, we don't want to do despite under the spirit of grace. We want to, to submit ourselves to it. Amen. Willingly and joyfully submit ourselves to the working of the grace of God in Christ Jesus in our hearts and our minds. Uh, he gave his life for us. So as we come to the table this morning, we want to confess willingly and joyfully that we want to continue to give our lives to him. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful, Lord, of your son, Jesus Christ, how he gave his life for us. We pray, Lord, that this would always remain within us a holy thing, that we would always do, do uh, give due reverence to, to you and to Jesus, and we pray, Lord, that you would help us to be able to continue in this life. We want to willingly, completely continue to give ourselves over to you as a, a, a living sacrifice. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.